definitely fit or not, as crazy as it is to say. I actually enjoyed watching a Penn State football game. They actually passed the ball a little bit. All right, cool. Let's make this quick. Going to talk about two games. Red River Shootout, Texas, Oklahoma, and no other than. Let me shut this door real quick. Penn State and USC, the game that I was really watching the most, especially in the second half. There's not much to say, and that's why I want to make this a short video. Guys, there is not much to say. Oh, sorry. There we go. Like I said, not much to say about this OU-Texas game. Oklahoma just doesn't have too much of really, well, that's really sure. They don't have an offense. They're going to struggle to win many games this year that, well, when they play a good team, just because you got to be able to score points. Even in the Auburn game, they got fortune when that one defense built them out. Now, I do think the score's deceiving. Wind up being, what was it, 34-3? Because it's a very similar thing with Clemson and Georgia early on in week one. Georgia's not 30 points better than Clemson, at least in my humble opinion. There's a case and scenario of when your defense is getting stop after stop after stop after stop after stop. They get tired. They get worn out. And it's sort of demotivating. Well, not sort of, but it is demotivating when you're doing your part, doing your job. Offense isn't helping you out. And that's what happened. And in Texas, I think one of the biggest turning points in the game is at 7-3. Texas breaks off a long run. And guess what? Oklahoma forces a fumble. That ball rolls at least. How far did that ball roll from the five to the back pylon? And Texas wide receiver, credit to him. Hustle play picks it up, 14-3. Then Texas, they pour it on from there. When they got up 21-3 going into half, I knew it was over. The reason I knew it was over is because I didn't think Oklahoma could even score 21 points. I won't be honest. Defense is fine. They just, they got to fix some things on offense. And I was kind of bummed down to see this turn to a blowout because the Red River Shootout is one of my personal favorite games of the year. I love it. It's one of the best games in college football to me, and I think it's one of the most underrated games. Now, is it up there with the Iron Bowl? Eh, I wouldn't say all that. I wouldn't even say it's better in Michigan and Little Bro State, but to me, it ain't too far behind those. It's not up there with them, but it's not like extremely far, especially in recent years. Been some great games. I know there was a blowout two years ago, but last year, that was an all time classic with doing Gabriel. But let's pull out some of these quick stats. I'll write them down real quick, and then we'll get on to probably the game you want to see me talk about the most because there's not too much to say for Oklahoma, Texas, because you know they got blown out, and that is. Penn State, what about that? Coming back at the end. All right, cool. This is the only stat I need to show you because it's the only one that matters and it pays the picture perfectly. As you see here, Oklahoma offense. And we're going to go total yards. Take a guess at how many total yards they had in this ball game. Uh, we'll just circle that and draw a nice big arrow down here. Yikes. Not going to win many games doing this. 237. 237 total yards. And here's the crazy part. They actually had more first downs in Texas. They had 18. Texas had 17. Third downs for OU. I'll write this right here. Third downs. Wow. Four for 15. Pretty dang bad there as well. Just wasn't good. Defense did their part. Don't know why that 34 to deceive you and believe OU's defense didn't do their part. I feel like they did. It's just offense didn't help them out. And it's a shame there. But let's not that shot. We knew Texas was a better team. I had Texas rolling in this one. Quinn Ewers, a little bit shaky. I did say that in my preview. I remember I thought he might struggle a little bit. And that's the only way Oklahoma has a chance. They got to force a pick six, maybe two pick sixes, a scoop and score. Defense got to score points. I knew it was going to have to happen. Quinn Ewers is shaky. If I was a Texas fan, I wouldn't worry, though. When you don't play football for a month, I mean, you're not going to come back looking like prime Tim Tebow, prime Cam Newton, prime John Enzo, whoever you want to throw in there. Okay, just doesn't happen like that. Texas is Texas. They get the win. Nice little, not a great, great win. I'd say it was a good win. Nice little golf clap. Good win. They didn't really impress me a lot. They, they just took care of business. I really can't say anything bad about them, man. That's what's good. Like You can't even nitpick about them in this game. They did their thing. Credit to them. By the way, I love that Texas defense. I've been trying to tell people since 2022, Texas got underrated defense. It gets overshadowed because when you hear Texas, you think of the Sarknado, which is Sarkeesian. And when you think of Sarkeesian, 
you think of offense. But that Texas defense, they are flying around the ball. And to that play call, wasn't it the first touchdown Texas scored? I believe it was. It was like third and six on the goal line. Ewers running out to his right. And he had the tight end hand. Threw it back to him. That was that was a beautiful play. Sarkeesian's one of the brightest minds in the game. Love watching him call games. But yeah, that's really all I got to say about that. USC Penn State. I'm going to clap it up to Penn State, man. That was a heck of a comeback. Really great comeback win. It does help that USC crumbled like a cookie. Let's just call it what it is. I mean, they crumbled. As to how USC blew that game, kind of shocking, man. The way they were playing in the first half, they were playing good defense, offense was doing solid, and they just didn't do anything in the second half, really. Didn't do much of anything. I don't even know where to start with this. I guess you could, you know, let's pull up the stats first, because Drew Aller, I mean, he turned it on in the second half. All right, cool. I know this is going to sound crazy, and trust me, nobody's a bigger Drew Aller hater than me. I don't hate the guy, I just don't think he's that good of a quarterback. I think he's all right. He can be good at best, but I don't think he's great or anything like that. He ain't going to go out there and win you games. Aller, outside of the three INTs, let me point to it here. Y'all can see that, right? Yeah, 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 you can see it. I didn't know if it was too low. Outside of the three INTs, I mean, that guy was slinging that thing. He looked like prime Brett Favre. He was throwing a rock. And, <laughs> boy, for the ride, as crazy as it is to say, I actually enjoyed watching a Penn State football game. They actually passed the ball a little bit. I know, right? Look what your offense can do when you pass a little bit more. And don't get me wrong, I'm all for running football teams, but I just felt like what's held James Franklin back over the many years is you ran the ball too much. Your quarterback, when you aren't throwing the ball 12, 17 times per game at max 20, you know, I, that's such an old school mentality. I think you got to throw it at least 25 times per game. Well, it, it depends how the game's going, but in this one, definitely. Our four three pass attempts. Will he ever or any other Penn State quarterback in the future have 43 pass attempts? I don't know, man. I have a hard time believing that 391 yards. You can't ignore the three INTs, but I'm telling you, outside of that, and I, I know you can't really say outside of that because it happened. Played pretty good. He threw the ball well. He made up for it, okay? He made up for it, especially second half, opening drive, and then they got to stop, and then boom, just like that. You look up, it's 2020. They tied it up. Miller Moss. I like Miller Moss. He is going to throw a pick or two here and there, but outside of that, I really like him. I feel like I'm saying outside of that a lot, but stick with me. 20-34, 2-20, two touchdowns, one IT. It was a fun game to watch. Lincoln Riley, I'm not going to say he screwed it up, but it, it just seems like he can't win. I guess you shall say the big game. Because, well, let's not get it twisted. Penn State wasn't the underdog. They're the ranked team. USC's unranked. I kind of disagree with that, but they unranked. And I did pick USC in this game. Kind of salty they didn't pull it out because it would have made me look like a genius calling upset. It came down to this. Penn State made more plays at the end of the game, and now they're going to be inside the top three because the loser of Ohio State and Oregon... It's going to fall behind them. So congratulations to them. I don't have too much more to say, guys. There's our games going on. We've got a busy night. This won't be the last time you see me. Congrats to Penn State. I thought they looked solid. That's a hard win. Hard-fought win. Down 14 on the road. Some may say, oh, well, they struggled with USC. Dude, USC is a good ball club, man. I think USC is pretty good. You could say, oh, well, they lost Minnesota. Who cares, man? There is so much parity in college football. If you can't understand that, I don't know what to tell you. It is what it is. USC's good. They got offensive match my head coach. Big win for Penn State. Many more things I would love to say. We'll talk more about this Sunday recap, but I got to get back to watching these games. Let me know your thoughts down below about that.